Hi everybody, welcome to Stumpy Grump Scale Speed Shop. This is going to be the final episode, part eight of how I build a model car. This will be the final details and final pieces going on. All the trim pieces and, and stuff like that, all the little pieces. This is the part of the build where it is difficult but extremely necessary to, to be patient. I have found myself wanting to rush through and get this, get one done, and I've messed up. So as hard as it is to do, we need to take it slow. All righty. I'm going to get the camera spun around. Let's get to it. All right, so here we are at final detailing and assembly. Now, what I did learn is that I did have to put the rear wheels on before I put the chassis and the body on. So, sorry for that got ahead of things um yeah so that happens sometimes but the rear wheels are in and now it's time for the front so you just insert the pins into the holes Carefully push them in. And same thing on the other side. I have to angle them a little bit. Get them up under the fender well there. I just kind of spin them. So they're on. There we are. The wheels are on. Looking like a car now, isn't it? Okay. A lot of these final steps can be done either in order that they show it or you can skip around a little bit and there's the details so what i usually do is is things like the, the the door handles here and the mirrors and even these little fenders that are only on cars like this windshield wipers i do those last those are the last things i do the little intricate things because if I put them on first and then I try to put the bumpers on I usually end up losing them this instruction sheet has it right you put them on last some you haven't put them on sooner but I always wait for the last so I have the headlights in have my turn signals painted ready to mount with this piece here And the bumper for the front and for the back tail panel and bumper area, I do still have to put the clear red tail lenses in. So I'm going to do that right now. I had painted the rear bumper, the inner part of this rear bumper area and tail light area. I taped it off. Sprayed it with some Tamiya Pearl White that I used for the body color. And then I unmasked it and I just took a toothpick and scraped away this little centerpiece here and around the bezels for the taillights. That's all I did. Customized it a little bit, a little bit of more custom look to it. It looks pretty cool, kind of, kind of low key, but kind of cool. Goes with the theme, I think. So 
So while a couple of things are drying here, I will take the grill piece here. from the sprue. So now you have your grill piece. You want to fill these in with some black paint. You can either use Panoline accent color. It might take you a couple of tries to to get the, an even coverage with that because it's pretty watery. Or I use my black craft paint. Give it a little shake. Grab your paintbrush. I remove the cap and just use the paint out of the cap and just get inside these just get inside there yeah I don't worry about how neat it is right off the bat just want to cover them up You just want to make sure you get good coverage. Inside each one. Now you don't want to get paint all over your headlights though, so just watch it there. So you've painted it, and now you just take a Q-tip And rub off the paint from the rest of the grill where you don't want it. And you just make sure you get everything covered in paint there. Like I said, it might take you a couple of attempts. You'll go through a couple of Q-tips, too, doing that. Or you could use a cloth, whatever you want to do, paper towel, cloth. Whatever will do the trick. And there, for the most part, you have your grill. We'll continue with the grill and headlight area here. I'm going to put in the headlights using Mod Podge. You can get the stuff anywhere, guys, even at the dollar store. Very versatile. I just use, once again, a toothpick. Just dab it around the outer edge here. You can see where where it sits. And you take your headlight and your tweezers. And just set it in there. Line it up straight. Straight as you can get it. And there you have it. One headlight down.
Okay, and this Mod Podge dries clear, so you don't want to worry too much. You don't want it everywhere, but if you got a little bit here and there, you don't have to worry about it. It dries clear. That's why we use it for clear pieces. And again, you get your clear lens with your tweezers. You have a pair of headlights. So the headlights are in. And I used the end of a toothpick, a very versatile tool, to apply the Tamiya clear orange for the turn indicators. So starting things off, we glue the rear bumper on. You find the, the locating points, the adhesion points, which is right back here. So I used my Instacure here because it's, you're not going to see any kind of white residue because it's all behind the bumper. So that's what I used for that in that instance. So that's on. We'll get the license plate on. I will take my Mod Podge again. And a toothpick. It's the decal. I do not take the decal off. I just cut it and glue it on with the backing on it. Make sure it sits square. And let it dry for a few. <clears throat> I will use the Mod Podge again to glue the actual frame and plate onto the rear bumper as well. So again, toothpick of Mod Podge. But with your tweezers, line it up. There's your license plate. Okay, and then we go on to the front grill and bumper assembly and attachment to the body. I gotta honestly say this has been the toughest part of this kit is the grill and bumper assembly and mounting it. The best way that I came up with was to glue this piece here onto the grill, then glue the, that onto the body, let that dry real good, and come back and glue this bumper piece on last. Also what I did is, you see this center piece right here, That centerpiece, I ended up chopping that off. Okay. And you see these brackets right here? On mine, they didn't actually fit. The bumper did not rest against it. So I added a couple little pieces of, of styrene strip. I have this thin styrene strip here. And I cut a couple of tiny pieces off the end 
and glued them there and let the bumper rest against that. So if you're following along on this, to do this particular kit, that's how I did the front bumpers. Probably the trickiest part of the kit. Okay, so we're gonna move on now to the rest of the detail parts. You got these little things here that go on the top of the fender. Touch a little Tamiya extra thin cement. Just set it right on. Same thing with the other side. Definitely want to be careful because this is going on a painted part here. So definitely want to be careful. There that is. So before I go any further now, I'm at the point to where you can either do this before you can do it whenever you want, once everything's done. You, you can even put your tent pen line accent on before you wet sand polish and wax. I always wait till the end when I'm almost done, okay? Now it's time to do this because your next few things you're going to do, you're going to do your door handles and your wipers, but I, I slip a little pen line accent in my little grill grates there so that's what I'm going to do next with my Tamiya pen line accent in black and shake it up a little bit it's like everything you use that's liquid and mix you gotta shake it up Gonna want some cotton swabs for this. Once again, they're very tightly wound. You don't have a lot of stray fibers and whatever coming out. So once again, I use my chiseled Q-tips to wipe away any excess pan line accent I have. Let's see if I can do this on camera. I do have a pan line tutorial that has a better, a pretty good view. I'm just gonna do this real quick. Okay, we have the rest of the door panels done. And even the gas cap door, the fuel door. One thing with this, when you dab it, you'll see it if you, if you watch my tutorial. You don't wanna leave it on there too long. You dab it in, you let the capillary action take effect and wherever you dabbed it, whether you might have got some up here, wipe it off fairly quickly with the, with your cotton swab here. And be careful handling it afterwards because when it's wet, it will pick up on your fingers. And before you know it, if you, if you touch it someplace, it's on your finger and then it's all over your car because this stuff gets everywhere. Before you know it, you'll have it all over the place. So if you get you get it on your fingers and not even know it, and then it's just all over the car. I've done that before. It cleans off fairly easily with your swab, but you don't want to you don't want to mess with that. So be careful until it's dry. I usually do this. It's almost lunchtime, so I put this I put it on. You can see my my. up there before I put the wipers on. I usually do this, you know, just before lunch. That way it'll sit and dry for a couple hours. So I'm not getting handled too much in the, in the meantime, so. So it's about lunchtime for me. I'll come back and finish up the rest. There's not much left, guys. 
Not much left. I mentioned earlier in one of my other ones, the chassis, suspension, and exhaust part, that I might do something different with the exhaust, and I think I'm going to. Let me find my tubing here. My 3 16th inch styrene tubing that resembles like a 3 inch exhaust. It's, a, it's about 3 inch scale. What I might do, I might either have the exhaust come out this way, or I might snip it right there, bend it a little bit, and have the exhaust come straight out the back. But that's what I'm going to do. And we'll come back. We'll see how it looks, and I'll show you. Line it up, make sure it looks good. And if I got it the way I like it, then what we'll do is we will airbrush some Molotow Chrome onto it. Okay, so I decided to go with the side exhaust behind the rear wheels, coming out right behind the rear wheels. Get everything cut, measured, test fit. I'm liking the way it looks. So a little bit later on, I will get everything airbrushed in Molotow Chrome, and we'll be back. Okay, so here we are the next day, and the exhaust tips are done. 3 16 3 inch styrene tubing measured and cut for the exhaust and painted airbrush with Molotel Chrome. Little dab on there. So you're not actually touching it. So I don't know how quickly it's going to dry. Okay, and I'll take the other tweezers and slide it off. There's one side. And there we have the exhaust tips. Shot from the back. And from the sides. Wipers are on. Something I'd recommend doing here for the door handles. You, you do it before you prime and paint and everything. I didn't think about it. But drill a hole. You can see where there's you can see where it's set up where the door handle to go into. Drill a little hole in there. And take your little door handle. Drill a little hole in it. This is what's called pinning the parts on. Then I take my piece of copper wire, which I have tons of laying around, you know. I do use my Instacure for this. Just a dab. You just need a dab. Put it into your door handle. 
since you only need a tiny piece. You just carefully snip it off. And there's your tiny piece. Do that to both sides. I do that to the rear view mirror as well. You can do it after you paint and all that stuff, but it's just better before, before you paint. I'm going to use Mod Podge again for this step. I just dip my toothpick into a little bit of the cap there. There's always a little bit left in the cap. Don't need a lot. Just slip it in. And push it down. There's your door handle. I'm going to go ahead and put the glue on the door handle this time instead of on the side of the car. You can kind of see a little bit better doing it that way. And there's your other door handle. Same thing with your mirror. I got my hole drilled where it goes. And I'm just going to slide it right in. Without an issue. these new Ravel two-piece mirrors. This is the difficult part. Do what you can to, to get the chrome out of that little hole and off the little nub that it goes on to. And lots of patience here. Put some glue on the end of that nub. And very carefully put it on. You have to hold it for a minute. In this situation, I think I might want to tap it a little bit with this Timia Extra Thin. It's not going to leave a residue, not on the chrome, not right there. Just hold it up. Get the angle right. I'm not so sure how perfect you're going to get it. But it's good enough. Good enough for me. That's the mirror. I already popped the hood on. The hood pops right on. No issues whatsoever. The hood just pops right on. You can even, on this particular one, Bring it straight up like that. You take your engine picks without having a, any kind of a bracing, a toothpick or whatever you want to use, to, a little prop rod to prop the hood up. It's not r really overly realistic having it straight up like that, but you can take your pictures without taking the hood off of your engine. And then just let it slip down. Okay, so I did go ahead and decide to add on the cross flags emblem in the front and the Impala SS emblem on the rear on each side. 
pretty discreet. They don't really stand out or nothing, but I just kind of thought maybe instead of the real clean look, maybe it, it just kind of needed those in front. So that is the final detail on this bad boy. What a super kit from Ravel. Really enjoyed this one. Really enjoyed it. I really hope you guys enjoyed watching me build this thing. All right, so that will conclude this series of how I build a model car. I want to thank everyone who followed along or those that might have just tuned in for, for a minute or two to see what kind of a train wreck this might turn out to be. Um, I will have the full reveal on, in the next day or two on this one. I hope this was helpful to at least one or two of you out there. Maybe more, hopefully more. Because, um, well, you know, I, I, I've said it before, I'm not an expert, but... I have learned a few things along the way in the past five or six years on both YouTube and the Facebook groups that I feel like I could just pass along for maybe those that aren't as experienced yet that are just kind of starting back out in this hobby because that seems to be quite a quite a trend here in the past few years. So anyways, thanks for tuning in to Stumpy Grump Scale Speed Shop. Stay tuned for my next project, which I haven't figured out yet, but as soon as I do, I will have at least start with the unboxing. So until then, I'll see you next time.